are becoming a way of life for an awful lot of people, uh, old and young, and uh, it looks like this company, Oticon, is looking to maybe make things a little bit easier with your uh, with your hearing aids. So I'm with Michael Porsbo in the Oticon booth, and he's going to show us a couple of examples of what their hearing aids can do. Well, first and foremost, we've made a very good hearing aid. I would have to say that to begin with, but what we've done is sort of added the icing on the cake by enabling this, this uh, hearing aid uh, to connect directly to the internet. This will empower a lot of users to do things much more convenient and efficient in an everyday life that we see in this emerging uh, Internet of Things where everything gets automated and everything talks to each other. So this is the Oticon Open, the latest generation from Oticon. It's a tiny, tiny hearing aid where you have a, basically a whole PC computer placed in here. It does all the sound processing and then transmit it to a small speaker which is sitting at the tip, which is the part that you have in your ear. Now one of the things we got clarified as we talked about it a little bit before we started started was that when you say directly connected to the internet, the hearing aid talks over Bluetooth LE to a smartphone and then the smartphone talks to the internet and then starts having things happen for the user. Exactly. That's the whole point and the, uh, the, the central point in our way of doing things is that we tap in to an already existing framework. So we tap directly into the if, then this, if this then that service so that we can integrate with a lot of other uh, you know brands and products that already uh, uh, is part of that solution. Now I like that you're using IFT because that gives us industry standard basic uh, tools to building to have building blocks to be able to build up scenarios. So maybe walk through a scenario that uh, I know you've got a video here but which we're going to try to capture on film but talk through uh, the, one of the first examples you showed us here. Yeah, yeah the, it, I think the analogy to building blocks is pretty good. It's sort of like Lego building blocks which is out of Denmark, you know. So uh, so we have our Lego building block now which is called Oticon and then we can talk to all the other yeah, building it, blocks and build our own houses. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Michael's from Co uh, Copenhagen so yeah, he's, he's going to push the agenda. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we love Lego, you know, so that's how it is. That's why we all become engineers in Denmark, because we play with Lego when we're kids. So There we that's go. How it is. All right, let's take a look at one of these scenarios yeah, so, here. So there's, a, there's two ways we can uh, interact with the internet. We can have uh, you, basically the hearing aids do something that then affects something else, or we can have something happen on the outside world, you could say, that affects what goes on in our hearing aids. Oh, neat, neat. Okay. So I'll give you an example of both of them, and the first example is pretty straightforward. It's uh, You can't hear the doorbell. Uh, you know, it's noisy, so instead of having to listen for the doorbell with your hearing aid, we can actually push a spot no notification directly to your ear. So we'll show you how that works. Do you want to bring the camera over here? Or? And then I guess you can just, you know... We'll talk through it. Yeah, exactly. So in this uh, case, we have a woman, she has a hearing aid on, she's doing, uh, you know, something with a blender, it's very loud in the kitchen. Even I would not be able to hear the door in this scenario, so because we have a doorbell which is connected to the internet and the if this then that network, we can basically set up a rule which says that if somebody rings the door, this is the message I want to have in my hearing aid. So again, the message is uh, your own, you define it, and it's on your native language. So it, whatever you want to hear, that is what you hear. So when, when the doorbell rang, if the uh, signal went to the internet, went back down to her hearing aid and yeah. said, there's someone at the door. Exactly. And to, to, to make that happen, uh, the user would make a small rule which said what is it I want to hear when somebody is ringing the door. That's pretty easy. It is straight, pretty straightforward and again the interface on the IFT network is pretty much like the building blocks we talked about so it's very graphical. You have you know an icon for Oticon, you have an icon for the for the door and you bring those two together and define what needs to happen when these two building blocks they meet. Great, so that was the case of a device had something happen that sent a message exactly. to, the, to the hearing aid. Now let's go the other way around. Yes, so the next example which is also pretty straightforward but which is to any hearing aid user a known scenario that you're running out of batteries that for the normal user is not a problem because they know what to do right they just bring their batteries and change them but in this case we have a daughter who has a hearing aid and the hearing aid is running low on batteries and we'll see how that works okay So here we have the daughter, she's playing in her room like any other daughter, it could also be in the, in the daycare or the whatever, in school. Um, she's running out of battery, or rather her hearing aids are. And again, we go back to the IFT service, and then we tie that service to an SMS service. It could also be Facebook, it could be anything we integrate with. And in this case, the mom gets a text message saying that her daughter's batteries are running low, so she knows to, to, to bring some when she picks her up or whatever it needs to happen. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that's probably the most useful scenario, right? Yeah. I might need that one just to know that they're going low. Exactly, and, 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 and that's back to our, you know, our working assumption that 
that we want to, you know, make this uh, Internet of Things that matters to people, right? We, don't, we just don't, it's not just goofing around, it's really trying to, to add some value to the users by, by having all this talk to each other. Yeah, now you said earlier that this wasn't life-changing, but in a lot of ways that is. The things that make your life easier, that you can do more things uh, with something that you've already got in your ear, that's a fantastic idea. Exactly. I mean, we can actually document also on the hearing aid side that if you can reduce the cognitive load on people in general, you actually free up a lot of energy, you get less tired, you basically free energy and you actually also do that indirectly with this type of stuff because there's a lot of things you don't need to remember all the time anymore because it's taken care of for you. Oh, that's right. I mean, our, we, we uh, have an awful lot of cognitive load, that's for sure. Yeah, we have and we always have to remember, did I do this, did I do that? Uh, so now you just leave the house and everything is done for you. Yeah, I'm hoping to be completely incompetent by the time this is fully all deployed across the internet. So Michael, thank you very much. How would people find out more about your hearing aids? Well, uh, we will always welcome people to visit our websites and you can find, you know, local uh, dispensers, which we call our resellers, where you, of course, can get a personal visit and learn much more. And the spelling of the company is O-T-I-C-O-N. Uh, what's the URL? It's uh, oticon.global, uh, actually. Great. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping by.